good day and welcome to preferences we're ready to go Chuck we were playing a numbers game earlier and so I'll ask you did you know that there were nine preference screens 75 I, preferences? <laughs> wow I honestly didn't when we were starting to plan this I said we have lots of options and that's what we're all about today and of course as an ACEWARE user uh, one of our mantras is that you've got choices and so again what we'll be doing today is taking you through the different preferences that you can use to work with Student Manager. And again, this is just on Student Manager. Of course, those of you with the ACE Web module know there are lots of preferences on that as well. So here is our rule game. Now, we are a little bit behind schedule because me being behind and losing my invites. So we'll just move straight ahead. Um, again, uh, preferences are what allow you as a user at the University of wherever, at the organization of wherever, to set up your student manager to better fit your organization. Think of it as a custom Hong Kong tailored suit that you've got that will be built just for you. And so we're about making you a perfect tailor so you can get that perfect fit. And obviously, I should have had some beautiful suits up here, some Armani's and, uh, you know, in the process. Lori, I'm going to first ask folks, though, to take a quick quiz or a poll. And if you'd bring up the poll that we've talked about, about how often you guys might have been in preferences. So, so let's go ahead and get it going. When was the last time you opened the preferences screen? And as you're looking at your selections, and you can only select one here, I'd like to, to mention that Chuck wrote the very last one, and that cracks me up. It's just not his norm, normal vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> like, never. Yeah, there we go. It's like Valley Girl. I'm, I'm, I'm descending into Valley Girl speak here, so there you and go. And this is before you go to learn. <laughs> yes, before. Yeah, and I know, learns in D.C., so that'd be more, you know, uh, East Coast, maybe yuppie, uh, yuppie, as opposed to Valley Girl, if we were going west. So, so we'll give you five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and I'll share the results. So, about seventy percent of our people have been in within the last month. So, wow. Okay. So we've got people now. I'm going to. Uh, um, I'm going to, there we go, okay, looking at the numbers. All right, so there have been some fairly active folks. That's a good deal. I'm going to uh, ask one more question here, and I'll get to the next screen. But how many of you uh, are keepers of the flame? And by that, uh, and we're going to go to the um, hands, the show of hands. And Laura, if you give me audience view, that let me maybe watch that. Raise your hand if you are the main administrator of the student manager at your campus. Uh, you're the one who sets passwords. You're the one who kind of does the, uh, uh, you're the one who uh, determines who gets to do what. OK, we've got a bunch of uh, sysadmins here. So that was what we kind of expected. So all right, well, let's, let's move on going here. So again, if you're not the system admin, of course, you need to know that Preferences is something that is set up by the admin. And again, you as a system admin know that you do have the power to turn the password or the preferences on and off for people. And we'll, we'll show you that as we go through. Um, there is a preference screen. And this is what Lori said, nine different screens uh, for every major area in Student Manager. And names, so all of the basic data screens plus a couple of system ones that are kind of don't really necessarily tie to a given data screen. Uh, rules of the road, and I, I'll move this up earlier here. Uh, in the preferences area, they're color coded. You'll see black items. You'll see blue items. And again, uh, black items are ones that actually can be, they may be and can be user specific. So. Susie in registration could have a different preference on the name screen than Mel over in workforce training if you've got different uses of, of people in the same student manager. Blue items are global. Those are the biggies. Those are everybody plays by those rules. Um, and again, if we're, as we're looking at these, these uh, preference screens, I am set up in the demo as an administrator, so I see both. 
if you do not have administrator access, that is a level six, you're not going to see or be able to edit the blue ones. Now, you might be able to see the values, but you can't edit those. And then there are some that are purple uh, that are kind of hybrid. Um, you don't have to be an administrator for those, but you do have to be the highest access level in password settings in order to use that. So again, uh, that's, those are the big uh, color elements that are involved. Um, the basic processes of preferences are activation. And a lot of the, the screens have to do with enabling or activating fields. Do you want to use the second address line? Do you want to use the badge name field on a name record? And again, these all have to do with the name record. So again, if they're marked with a check mark, they will show up. The other element, and again, this, the mantra on this is use them or lose them. And, and again, uh, Lori and I have talked about this. If you really don't want to store information in the language field or the marital status, or you don't care about fax phone for your community ed people, go ahead and turn the field off. There's no sense having a field open to wade through or stumble through if you're not going to use it. And again, you can always turn it back on if you decide that you're now going to do business programs, and yes, you want a business fax phone, you can go in and turn that field back on. All right, uh, so uh, the other element is for, again, administrators. Uh, the blue items, you have the ability, as the keeper of the flame, to repurpose, relabel those fields. Uh, some of you may know or are familiar with my mash joke about the Hawkeye ordering an incubator by crossing out machine gun on the re requisition and handwriting in incubator. Well, this is your chance to repurpose or to reuse the boxes on the screens for your own uh, customized purposes. Uh, and I think most everybody is doing something on that. Um, and again, you do have to be that system admin for that. Now, one of the things that we talk about, or I, I'm glad you're all here, because 7.2 and 7.2a have added a lot of new options in the preferences. Uh, things like being able to edit the organization code label, being able to edit the occupation code label. Those are new features that were not available to ACEWARE student manager users really a few months ago. And that's why we really emphasize the importance of going in and looking at these uh, preferences. Um, so let's take a walk down preference lane. And the first thing you want to do is, well, how, how do I get to preferences if you haven't discovered it? Most of you have, though. Three different ways. One is you can do it from the edit menu, and you'll see preferences. You can do it from the main menu by hitting the little hand in the folder. And if you're an admin, you can go into the preferences button on the um, password maintenance screen. So edit preferences, the shortcut on the menu, or from the um, uh, password maintenance screen. System preferences. Number one, OK, uh, these are global issues. Some of the ones that I kind of think are big, big deals are, number one, the pick list reset time. And again, this determines the time delay when you're, you, as a user, are working in the find window. And by that, we're saying, if we go into the find window, and I start typing, have a check, H-A-V, 1001, 1002, 1003, it waits three and a half seconds before resetting what I'm typing. And so that is the reset feature on the, uh, on the, on the find window. The other one is turbo option on reports. Um, the big deal here is that if you have a large number of records, and this is particularly in the deadbeat reporting area, which of course, as you recall, folks, is Chuck's favorite report area, so that if you're running deadbeat reports out of deadbeat, if you have a large data file, it, the turbo option allows you to hopefully speed that up a bit. Other one is the ACEWEB URL. And what this is is the stem of your server name 
and of course W connects. So if this was the University of Nebraska Lincoln Ollie, it might be www.unlolly.edu slash W connect. And what that allows you to do is that when you're then working with classes and you're building them and you want to see what it will look like on AceWeb, the preview AceWeb course status page is where it ties back to that URL link. And when you click on that, it will actually take you to the AceWeb view of what that course is going to look like online. So that is a really, really powerful feature. Uh, raise your hand. Uh, but I'm going to take the hands down. Raise your hand if your AceWeb users have, have done that, if you use that. All right, we've got a few. Ada. Oh, anybody else? OK, Lindsay's got there. Uh, Renee. All right, we've got a few. But again, for those of you with AceWeb, that is a really nice feature in that you can uh, do a quick proof, another way to look at to make sure your copy is going to be good on the system. Uh, AW skin, that's internal. Hide the backup for user level. Um, and again, all of these elements are referenced in the help guide. So again, uh, remember, folks, you've got help in the preferences under student manager topics. All of these items are covered in detail. So if we want to look at system preferences, Cheryl has a very good review of all of these items. So again, you don't have to write down your notes. You can just remember that help guide. And then finally, the macro keys. Again, I'm going to do a show of hands here. How many of you use the macro keys? Alt F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. All right, we've got a few. Summer. Uh, anybody else? Tracy, you use those? Come on, come on. Robin, yeah, we've got a few. All right, now here's one that I think is a sleeper element. Uh, the date string. You'll note here 06, 01, 2011, 06.30, 2.011. Well, now, what is that? Well, that is a date string that allows you, if you are typing in a particular date, like you're doing quarterly reports, this is an example. Well, it's not a good example. This would be uh, for, well, I guess this would be for one month. If, if we were running June's reports from 2011 and we had a whole bunch of reporting to do, by typing in a date string, MMDDYYYYY, it will actually paste those dates into a query field when you're trying to search for a particular uh, element. Now, I'm going to real quickly show you that and make sure my preference has that. OK, I've got a date range there. Good enough. So if I wanted to run a deadbeat report, and I want to do it for the course date between two dates, if I hold, now watch that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press one key, Alt F3. It automatically pasted in 01 through 030, 2011. So again, anytime you've got a lot of date entries, like a fiscal year, 06111 through 07 or 061 through or 06071 through 0630 2012 you could do a fiscal year and just bang bang get that done all right i'm going to ask uh, we're going to pause after each main screen to just see if there's any burning questions that people want to do or if a user wants to highlight something that they think is important Again, recognizing there is help in the help guide on the details of these. Anything, Lori? No, we're pretty good for All now. Right. But I would remind you that your Alt plus F3, Alt plus F4, you can use in the Find field as well. Oh, when you're doing your, you mean you're doing the search mode if you were, all right? All right, yeah, good it's, call. It's particularly for a conference or something like that where you're going there repeatedly. Right, and again, the Alt F1, the Alt F1 does that automatically in the sense of, you know, when it, it'll remember the last course number that you edited when you're working with course details. So uh, the, the, the repeater's in there. Let me get back to the slideshow. There we go. All right, so now names preferences. Um, Lots of options on names. One of the big things in general to pay attention to is that, remember, the top part of most of the preference screens have to do with enabling or disabling fields. 
renaming fields or allowing you to validate fields. Uh, the bottom part is typically a behavior thing. And so we generally kind of break it into sections. In some cases, we break the rules because we run out of real estate. But generally, you know, this is kind of you turn things on and off. The uh, bottom kind of determines some behavior. Um, and again, back to the issue on turning fields on and off. If you're not going to use them, lose them. It has no sense having fields on the screens that you're not going to work with. Um, some elements here I want to kind of highlight. Again, as we mentioned, new features of fields that are on the main name screen that you can repurpose now. The badge name field, uh, organization code, occupation code can now be relabeled. Uh, the idea of validation, um, which of course is that you have to pick a value from a list. You can't just freeform type. Down in the system behavior, a couple of things there is that um, the uh, name match, the uh, first name match when you're looking up names. Uh, it, it's basically your double check for kind of catching duplicates on the fly. And then also callback feature. Do you want to do callbacks, uh, which is the, the callback reminders. Um, and, and again, right here, callback date field. This is kind of a behavior thing that snuck into the top. If you want to do the name callbacks, you've got to turn on the report on startup if you want those popping up on the screen for you when you uh, log into Student Manager. Um, and incidentally, we're going to talk a little bit about that next webinar because it's going to be on CRM and Student Manager. A little bit of preview there, Lori. Um, but again, how far back you go to do callbacks. One of the other ones that I think is a big deal is the default sort on the name screen. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to that. Um, cancel, cancel, get out of this. Pulling up, have a check. OK. When you're in the name screen, you can define what the sort order is when you are navigating with the left and right arrow keys. Is my screen keeping up, Lori? Or are you keeping up with me? Doing a good job. Good job. OK. So right now, I'm last name, first name. So I should go from Havlicek to the next alphabetical, H to J, J to J, Jameson to Jones, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you have a mainly business-oriented set of, of programs, uh, and we do that at Aceware's uh, customer copy of Student Manager because we track schools, you might want to set your preference to firm name. And so what that allows you to do is that if you're on somebody from Aceware, uh, and you go next, we go to the next alphabetical person within the company Aceware. So again, that is something you can reset, and uh, you can set a preference for that. Now, if you don't have it set as a preference, when you leave the screen and come back to it, it will reset to your default preference. Now, once you stay in the screen, you can change it around temporarily, but it'll always, it'll always reset to what you have set on the preference screen. The only other thing that I have a big, big deal about is this warn when entering duplicate email address. If you're not doing that, I would encourage you to do that, because that is another way for you to help monitor duplicate names when you're working with the system. Um, and again, that's um, um, a big one. I guess the other one is use social number as primary find key and lookup. I'm going to suggest that for most of you uh, who, who are not using social security numbers, you're going to turn that off. Uncheck that. Now, what does that do? When you go to the find window, if you have that turned on or checked, you're going to have the column for that ID number right here between name and firm or name and address. And again, if that number doesn't mean anything to you, you got more real estate. If you turn it off, it still is here, but you, it's over at the far right side. It's clear over at the right-hand side of the lookup window. And again, so if you're really not using it for um, finding your people, Turn that off. Turn that off, and it'll give you more room on the, on the screen. 
Lori, any other comments you have or any other comments people might have brought in you want to cover real quick? I really like the label for the credential tab. That's, that's one of my favorite. Oh, things. oh, right down here. Yeah, and of course yeah. what this is, um, I will get to it real quick, is in the, the new feature on the name record is in 7.2a now, is the ability to have a credentials area. And I'm going to get to it. I think most everybody has this. But that you can have a credentials area where you store more detail. So depending on how you use it as a school or, or an organization, you can set that up for your own uh, with, with a name that makes more sense to you. All right. Uh, going once, twice. Gone. Gone. Course preferences. Uh, moving on down. Uh, again, turning fields on and off up here. Um, a couple of things on here um, that, that's a big, big deal is the reminder, email reminder. Uh, in 7.2, we gave you the ability, if you have email module, to automatically send an email reminder to students whose classes are coming up between now and X number of days into the future. So this is where you can set uh, the number of days out, the, the, the window of advance notice, and whether or not this person is the one who gets email reminders. If you have larger operations, it's probably good to centralize the responsibility or delegate the responsibility for sending those email reminders out to just specific people so you don't have everybody and their uncle coming in sending and maybe not not knowing what they're doing, which is always the case. Uh, so again, I that is, and you'll note that is that is local user preference. So again, you can turn that on and off for individual users based on uh, how you've organized your office. Other element in here, I believe, is of course the behavior of data fields, and several new options in here about how when you're cloning courses, you'll see cloning, cloning, cloning. How do you want the clone system to behave? Um, the membership tracking. If you have OLLI program, if you're doing memberships, this is where the, the membership system comes in. Um, it allows you to worry about early bird fees or not. And again, if you, if you don't use early bird fees, you just turn that off. Again, if you don't use a feature that you see in here, turn the thing off so that it doesn't uh, get in your face. Here's an option for those of you that haven't yet, on oh, you really ought, need to, that you haven't yet used or purchased the ACE Web element, uh, you can turn the ACE Web options off on your name or on your course screen so, so that you just don't be, you're not bothered by that particular, uh, particular screen. Trying to think, uh, any new things here, course time pattern, there's some customizability in here on course time, um, the idea of relabeling your instructor evaluation fields when you're assigning instructors to classes, uh, that, is, that is on there. I'm going to cover one with split location field. Um, I don't know how many of you use the split location field, but the difference on that is when you're in a course, uh, that you have the location field split into a building and a room. And again, if you are running programs where most of your classes actually do have, uh, they're, they're in a campus room or a meeting hall in a particular room in that meeting hall, then I would encourage you to do the split uh, location approach. If you're doing national seminars and your locations are the Holiday Inn Express, Duluth, Minnesota, then probably you're better off using the uh, uncheck the split location option. All right, Lori, any other thoughts or comments from folks on the course preference screen? This is an exceptionally quiet crowd. Quiet crowd. It's in the afternoon, eh? Too much for lunch. Come on, guys. <laughs> I need a, need a pause and have them jump, do a little jumping jacks here. Yeah. They're so, uh, party, I think. <laughs> there you go. Well, let me ask. I'll just, I'm going to make them wake up. Okay, wake up, folks. Wake up. How many of you use the split location field? That is, you have, uh, you have the location split into building and room. Raise your hand if you use the split location field. 
All right, and then we've got got a bunch of least some that are awake and there are responding. Well, a lot of you don't. And again, if you have um, again buildings and classroom numbers, uh, that's one that probably would be one you'll want to uh, you'll want to go with. I get back to my pointer. Okay, here we go. Uh, registration preferences again. Moving down the list, uh, turning fields on and off, uh, behavior elements, um, a couple of big things here, bill pay reg type. Uh, there, there's a whole section about that in the help guide, in, and especially if you are running corporate uh, training or in-house programs and you're dealing with third-party billing or third-party contacts, you're dealing with the training director to set up a class, and they're the one that gets the bill and so forth and so on, you may want to be using the reg, the reg bill pay type, bill reg pay type. Um, so that's, that's one to kind of pay attention, especially if you're doing contact training. Uh, some other things, checking prerequisites. If your program does not have prerequisites set up in the catalog system, turn that off. Uh, group by firm, prompt for grouping. Again, if your program does not group registrations together, which I, I'm not sure why you wouldn't, but if you're, if you're religiously opposed to doing that, turn that off. Uh, this is one, use the other fee quantity. Uh, this is something on the registration screen that when you add a additional charge onto a class, let me try to find one that's got all my, do I have all oh, this whole class is canceled? Let me get to a different one. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Registrations. So if we were to add bad check fee, five bucks. Now, I don't have, the quantity is turned off here, so I have that turned off on my demo. But basically, the quantity of optional fee items, that's what, that's what this use other fee quantity checkbox refers to. Uh, of course, program fees paid, this has to do with the optional package, uh, uh, the course packaging module. And then finally, uh, the other thing is what? WTD, that's what the Dickens is this, registrar mode. I'm going to raise your hand. Anybody, anybody in here have the registrar mode turned on for any of their users? Okay, well, let's, let's explain what it is. The purpose of the registrar mode is that when you're in, uh, when a, you can set up a user so that it does not show fields that aren't relevant on a new registration. And that's set in the password maintenance. And the idea is that uh, if you are registering a brand new student, eh, you're really not going to know what grade to put in their, in their grade field. And if the status is completed or incomplete, you're not going to know the status when you register. Ditto with uh, the date certificate was printed, uh, when was the course completed, well, you know, again, those are basically, that allows you to turn those fields off so that when a, uh, when a registrar goes to register a student, they would not see things like grade or CEUs or hours, uh, status. Those could be turned off. Again, it eliminates fields on the screen uh, when they're not relevant. But, but again, some other user could be allowed to, to see those things. All right. Uh, and I'd be happy to discuss that. I think we're doing okay time-wise and can get to those for questions. Lori, so far? Good? We, good, good. So far, so good. Organizational defaults. Again, we're moving along here. Uh, the, the last ones of these go a little quicker. Uh, the main part at the top is your label for your uh, headers that might be on default reports, zip code format, social security number, site code, some of this stuff is kind of unique for Canadian clients. Um, but the big thing on here is that I'd recommend is that unless you are using real Social Security numbers, uh, which I, well, let's, let's ask. Let's, let's wake people up. How many of you are storing real Social Security numbers in that name ID field? Raise your hand. And again, what we're talking about is from the name record, 
over here where it says ID number. Right, if you're storing a social number there, raise your hand. Otherwise, keep the mitts down. And uh, I'm not seeing anybody do that. OK. So I'm going to say that none of you, none of you ought to be having the format set to the traditional social. Turn it on to open text. He said, well, why bother? I kind of like the view. Well, the big deal about that is if you have duplicate names, you've got, um, who do we have here? We got uh, Lisa Anderson, Lisa Avery Good Twin, and Lisa Avery Evil Twin. You can copy and paste that ID number from one record to the other without having to fight with ask with the hyphens in between. And that, to me, ought to be worth the price of admission. Why you should be, why you should be doing that. Uh, other thing here, I think there was one other one. Nope, there wasn't. And before I leave. Uh, site code, the rest of this, I think, is fairly clear. All right, Pocket Ledger. Uh, this, for those of you who use the Pocket Ledger expense tracking system, allows you to turn fields on and off, use them as you, you might want. Um, firm preferences. Again, uh, there are several options for how you might manage the firm records in Student Manager. You can relabel fields. You can turn fields on and off based on whether those are things you're tracking. I'm going to skip through that. Uh, instructor or the faculty system. Um, again, one a couple big things here are, uh, are you going to uh, do instructor callbacks? Uh, and again, this is a big deal, because if you're not actually putting in data in an instructor callback system, turn it off because every time, even though you may not have callbacks entered in the system, if the checkbox is here, whenever you start the system up, whenever you start the system up, it would go through this checking instructor callbacks. And that takes you another 15, 20, 30 seconds, depending on your database size, to look up those records and tell you there's nothing there. Well, if you ain't going to use it, lose it. Again, don't, don't put up stuff that you're not going to be taking advantage of. Now, there are reasons to do it, but if you're not going to put any data in there to deal with it, take it off your table. All right, uh, pay preferences. And again, there are some big, big deals on this screen here. So this is one we will spend a little time on. Um, and again, remember, the help guide has the details here, uh, things like, Validating credit cards. Do you want to use uh, deposit numbers in doing your cash box? Um, again, uh, let me ask. I don't know how many of you are involved on the finance side, but raise your hand if you use deposit numbers as your method for doing cash box reporting. All right. I'm looking, 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 looking. Got a two or three. Um, again, you may not be the finance person, but that is actually I think a very, very uh, good way to do that gives you a lot more flexibility. Uh, here's another one. If you have Ace Web and you are the finance person, one of the options is for, uh, is for to show you uh, the AW pending payments, that if people went online to register and then they bailed in the middle of their payment process. Do you want to have those pending uh, payment records show up on the screen for you when you log in in the morning? And that, again, is a preference that you can just give that to the people who are the financial bean counters <clears throat> that are in charge of, 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 of credit card payments. Again, uh, redefining or, or identifying your custom payment processes, uh, how you want to do billing dates. Uh, input mask, coupon setups, again, primarily for the web. But uh, one of the things that ACE web users now have the ability to do is to set up a special one-time coupon setup so that you can have a one-off coupon. I think, Lindsay, you wanted to do that at SMU. Uh, you wanted to have a one-time coupon that a student could use once. Ten to bucks if you use the phrase SMU rocks. Uh, you get $10 off a class. Well, you could only use it once, and then it's turned off for the rest of that semester, and uh, it doesn't let the one student use the same code again and again and again. All right, questions? Lori, anything we're missing here? 
I don't believe so. All right, moving on. Preferences, global and local. Now, this is kind of to be or to preference or not to preference. The big deal between the two is, and, and you can do this with the, the system, is that you can have global preferences so that everybody who uses Student Manager has the same kind of look behavior on data entry screens. And so uh, the idea of how you have the preferences, you're going to make it the same for everybody. Now, the alternate of that is to do local, where every user has a permission uh, to change some of the look and behavior on the data entry screens. And again, uh, we'll show you how to, how to set up how to set up the default on that. Let me get back to the slideshow. Stay with me. There we go. Um, so, and this again is something that uh, you do need to be an administrator. You have to be the keeper of the flame, someone who's a level six user. Uh, password maintenance. Find the user that you want to use as the poster child. It does not have to be a system administrator. Check the set as default, save, you're warned, and I think at this point <coughs> the easiest way is to actually go in to show you. So we're going to look up a record <coughs> and, excuse me, so if I were to say, well, uh, I'm going to use mine because I like my preferences, I don't want to change them, but you could find any student in the system. Uh, and underneath the special access area is a box that says set as default preferences. So when you do that and do OK close, you're beginning to get some warnings. You've indicated to want this to set, yada, yada, they'll be the one everybody looks like. <clears throat> yes, we want to do this. <clears throat> now, because Chuck was an admin, you now have a further preference to scope the <clears throat> update preferences just for admin users or for everybody. So most of the time you're going to be doing this for all users. <clears throat> now the alternate approach, I don't know if anybody's ever used this, but if you have groups organized by functional area, <clears throat> and I'm thinking again for, for Canton, there's a nursing program and an adult ed program. So if there was a nursing group and an adult ed group, uh, Janet and Rebecca could actually set the levels of access so that Grace and the nursing people could have one set of preferences and then Rebecca and Janet and Jan and uh, uh, J Janet Jeannie, Jeannie uh, uh, would have their their own set of preferences. Most of the time people are going to say yes for all and that basically would mean everybody who logs in now to student manager will look like me. Wow. They'll basically have behaviors just like me. And again, a couple of notes about this. Um, when doing a mass reset, you really should have everybody else logged out of Student Manager. AceWeb doesn't matter. And again, if you do a mass reset, if you allow users permission to control their own settings, they can choose to edit their own preferences and change them back again. Again, unless you disable their edit preferences. So um, that's the big note on that. And I think we're getting close to Q&A here. UDF, so kind of a shout out to user defined fields. This technically, I, I suppose it's preferences. On each of the main screens, you have a link to what are called UDFs, name, course, register, and firm. So when you click on those UDF options, it gives you the ability to edit. Uh, first of all, there is a user level with permission, ability to say, I want to use it or I don't want to use it. The system administrator is the one who would have to put in the label. If we're going to call character one spouse or pet name or uh, uh, you know, alumna of you know, graduated from you know, the high school or their college, uh, that's going to be an admin kind of thing. So, and again, what that what that means then is that when you're looking at the data entry screen, we only see this active, inactive, active, inactive, inactive. Uh, you just turn on those fields that you want to use for the user-defined fields. 
and then validating fields. Um, how many of you have validated user-defined fields? Raise your hand. Okay, well, Lindsay's got a couple. <laughs> Nobody else. Okay. What validation on a user-defined field allows you to do is to say, uh, make your users or offer your data entry users the ability to pick from a list rather than having to spell broccoli, which for me would be a challenge. I'd say ugly green stuff. No, I, I like broccoli. Uh, but <laughs> you don't have to have them spell, and that kind of helps helps ensure data quality when you're when you're trying to identify things like t-shirt size. Well, rather than having the user type X or XL and uppercase, lowercase, or XX or not, you just create a drop-down, small, medium, large, XL, XXL, and they click from the list. So that is what that's about. And there is help about the validation of user-defined fields in the help code. Note to system admin, and I love, I love our chef here because this really is, you really can cook up or mix up or, or to design your own recipe. And again, uh, manager is more of a system that gives you a full kitchen with all the spices and ingredients and you can mix them together. But generally, recipes are nice. And that's kind of what we're talking about here, that you have policies, you have procedures, identified in your organization as to when are people able to use the preferences and what are the parameters within which they can do that. Um, and again, that, that there is somebody kind of looking over the big picture to make sure that um, people aren't going to go nutso and, and as a result your data in the system begins to get wacko wacko. So. We really just put the pedal to the metal, Lori, uh, and kind of wandered through here. Finally, and again, uh, remember the force. Remember the force. And I don't have my Star Wars uh, sound here. But the help guide. Uh, the Aceware help guide has the uh, reference, to, reference to the help. And again, so under preferences, you've got system, name, course, pay. All of these are covered in your help guide. So that when you have a question, well, I, I know there was something about the payments, and I can't remember. I don't want to watch the whole darn video again. Well, you can go to the help guide and be able to pick that up for you. So we are getting to the witching hour, I think, Lori. So uh, questions uh, we've got. Heavens, almost ten minutes. Do you want to highlight again? We are going to roll out our next webinar. Will be on CRM and student manager. And again, this is going to be more folks for your staff who might be the program coordinators, the program managers. We'll be talking about marketing with student manager. Not so much nuts and bolts about data entry. So again, that's SMU would be your program directors, the Tracys, the Kimberleys, you know, the folks who are actually marketing, managing, trying to get business into their program. We're going to talk to those people next uh, time we get together about CRM and marketing and student managers. So, Lori, how are we doing? Questions? Did we answer them all perfectly first time out? How do you do? I think you got the bulk of them. <laughs> we do have just a few. Okay. Um, if you turn off a field, like right. the backbone, for example, what happens to that number? Uh, roll that question back again. If you turn off the fax field. Oh, the fax field, yeah. Okay. Um, the data in the field does not affect. So if I've got a fax number here for Tom Aspartame and we decide we don't want to use fax in the preferences anymore, what happens is that that particular field is not open for data entry, but that any data in the field generally is available as Aspartame. Okay, well, now here's the one that's a lie. In this, some of the fields like country, if the field is turned off, you see actually a, a dimmed out version of the field. Fax field happens to be one that it actually disappears. The data is still there. So if there is a fax number, the fax number does not get erased. And again, uh, to, not to confuse people, but that's a little different from when we're dealing with um, when we're dealing with codes, you say, like, if we're going to delete a code, let me find one that I don't, I'm not using right now. Uh, let me find a different one here. 
President's slush fund. If I want to delete a code, the code delete will warn you, if you remove this code, I'm going to delete the bloody thing from the entire database. Okay, that does not happen when you're dealing with preferences, okay? Codes are different from preferences. When you turn something on and off, the data is still there. It is just hidden or it's dimmed out, uh, but it's still there. Okay, everybody with me? Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. I had one more in here. I want to go back and find it because she yeah. works better than I ever will. Um, Lindsay wanted to know if you switched your MNI MNID, MNID. <laughs> from Social Security to free tax. Would that have any major effect on the data that was in there? No, and again, I assume, let me make sure we're on the same page here. I think you're talking about this open text, social text. No, because the data is always stored in as pure text. So the ID number that you have when you're, when you're in, a, in a name record, and I'm going to do F5, Chuck, just to C-A-H-U-C-K, bring it up to, oh, come on. Charles. So again, the, 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 the data in the field is always stored without the dashes in the first place. So again, flipping the, um, flipping the format display uh, does nothing to the data. The answer is no, it just does nothing to the data. Lindsay's smiling. She sent you back a smile. There you go. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> we, we generally, there are very few places that dealing with the preferences mucks up the data. Now, I'm trying to think uh, where are we? There's, again, some deals about display. Uh, do you want to, one of, the, one of the display questions has to do with how you display the data. Do you want to display a description or display it by code? But the data itself is in there. Of course, the exception of this is that when we get into data cleanup, there are a couple of tools in course code transmogrification or code cleanup where, of course, when you get in there, you do have behaviors that are modifying data. But that's the point of the particular tool. I think right. that's about it. Well, I believe, thank you, that we're, we're together. I apologize for the late start today. Lori, thank you for another great set of slides. And uh, um, um, Greg and I are headed to the LEARN conference tomorrow. If anybody's coming, make sure to sum up and see us. And then we're in for the duration. And we will see you the end of the month after being stuffed with turkey, one week after Turkey Day. Uh, that will be a, a one, month, a one week to the, to, the, to the hour when you guys took your big after lunch nap. Uh, we'll talk about CRM and marketing and student managers. So everybody have a great rest of the month, a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you in a couple of three weeks. Bye-bye, everybody.